Hi guys, Ziz here with a full guide of the newest bosses. And if you don't want any spoilers, then why have you just opened a boss guide video? The first boss encounter is High Templar of Ares, which is actually pretty challenging. It has a pretty wide default attack, melee swing, which I assume deals physical damage, and a ranged attack where he fires three bolts that don't deal that much damage. Another attack he does is a delayed slam with a sort of ground slam shockwave. This actually packs a punch. He also has a charged up ranged attack which fires some bursts that also does pretty high damage. Eventually, he will animate one of the large statues in the sign, which are very slow but their attack actually hurts if you get hit by it. Try to cut these to the middle, because when they turn to stone later on, you want to use them to hide behind. At 50%, he goes into a phase where you can't kill him and he starts summoning flash charges for you. Sorry, I mean dangerous groups of enemies to kill you. Some of these actually do have proximity shield though, which can be a bit annoying. After this, the fight continues and you can easily finish off High Templar of Ares, which of course has a second stage. The god Innocence erupts from Corpse of Avarius and he has several new abilities. He'll throw delayed bolts into the air that will later rain down. They're pretty easy to dodge. He has a movement ability which leaves sparks behind and uh, if they stack up on you, they can deal pretty decent damage. Other than that, it's pretty low. He does have a beam ability which is very easy to outrun. Sort of like the Piety Beam, except it's targeted directly on you, and I outran this without a Quicksilver. You can also hide behind the statues once they've turned to stone, if you left it in a good spot. It does very little damage if you get glanced by it, but if you stand still in it, it does pretty high damage, sort of like Scorching Ring. It has a Meteor-like Slam, which does large amounts of damage. Innocence also has a Fast Charge stage, but will summon Prayer Gods, which are actually tankier and not just free Fast Charge. As you'll see, he also has a very fast slam, which is pretty hard to avoid. Try to keep Fortify up because it actually does hurt. Innocence also has a bullet hell stage where he launches a projectile that fires more projectiles and they do pretty insane damage. Hide behind a statue or be a Jedi. The choice is yours, Ixal. That's pretty much the entire fight. Next up, we have Kitava, which is the finishing boss for Act 5. Kitava has multiple stages, but starts out as a statue, which I believe is of Innocence. One attack, he pushes the ground with a ground slam esque effect, and if you trail around, you'll take insane damage and you're gonna die. You can jump over it without taking damage. Shield Charge and Whirling Blades will still take damage because you move through it and not over it. Flame Dash, Blink Arrow should also be fine if timed properly, as well as Lightning Warp. Another attack he slugs rubble at you, but it's not really that damaging. He has the slam, which at this point leaves a ground slam-like effect, but doesn't do too much damage. I would avoid getting hit by it though. Once he gets lower, the staff is going to shoot him and stage 2 will activate. Here he has an attack where he slams the ground, which creates a high damage degen effect. You can also summon a homing-like attack that will settle in on your location and try to detonate on you. There is another stage as well here, where the heart pops out of his chest, lol, and you have to fight some mobs while doing damage to the heart. The Sam where he lifts his hand slightly does a large amount of damage at this point and seems pretty overtuned. It actually one hit me with 1.7k life. It might have been a crit, but keep in mind that Act 5 replaces Act 1 Cruel. And yeah, this is pretty crazy. Once you get him to the next threshold, he turns into his fully red form, which I'm guessing is how the fight will start in Act 10. He now does a Kamehame Beam, but don't worry about dodging his death ray. It just destroys the staff and you fail the fight. This is where you lose the 30% all rest, get sent back to Act 5 to continue the story. You even get a pep talk from Sin. I'm not doing details on the smaller boss fights, but in Act 5 there's two Kohama, which is very easy. Abrath has some burst damage, but isn't overly hard. Chavron and the Brutus fight can be a bit bursty, and you definitely want some instant potions at this point. Rislatha is very easy and didn't seem to do anything at all. Now, the next big boss fight is the Brian King, which was fairly easy for my Sunder Marauder. He's got a slam which hits decently hard especially if you have no mitigation and he summons crabs to give you more fast charges. Nessa comes out of him and summons an ocean around the Brian King limiting the area you can move in while casting storm coal like attacks. You can see the area on the ground before it detonates and it does moderate to high damage. If you walk into the water it's going to push you inwards while doing very low amounts of damage to you. He also gets a weird water like shield which didn't seem to do much maybe it has like a damage aura. Overall a pretty easy fight. In Act 7 there are some minor bosses too, but nothing that really stands out too much. The Growth Cool fight was slightly damaging and Maligaro. But I'm way more scared of the Arachnid spiders before Maligaro. They do insane damage. It's uh, once you use a map device near Silk, I think it might be called Maligaro's map device. They're insane spark spiders that are death incarnate. The next big boss fight is Arakali. In stage 1 she fires two overlapping laser beams from sides of the map. Getting hit by both does quite a lot of damage. 
She throws down eggs, which turns into spiders if they aren't killed. They aren't very dangerous. Once you damage our Kali a bit, she starts doing more intense lasers. She will first fire the normal two, then shortly after, every other area will be filled with lasers. You can either stand where the first two are fired, which will be a safe zone, or run towards her. However, be super careful, as our Kali's front-facing plasma gun has insane burst damage, and if you stand directly in front of it, you can die to it very easily, especially if you're not expecting it. It's a pretty good fight, and definitely not a complete pushover. Hopefully this helps you guys out. I haven't tried the Act 8 content yet, so I haven't got any tips for that. But if you guys want to check out my other beta content, take a look at my beta overview video to see what other content I managed to create for you guys. Thanks for watching, and try to die less than I do.